welcome to Create Full Art. Today I would love to show you how to paint this landscape with a palette knife inspired by the artist Jacob Aguiar. To start out, you're going to want these supplies listed over here on the left. And I'm using three different blues. They are listed in the description. Ultramarine blue, green shade, cobalt blue, and cerulean blue, and my titanium white. And this is going to make the color of my sky. I'm also going to grab a palette knife and a wash brush, and you can do this on paper or canvas or a panel. For this first step, you're going to want to take your wash brush, not your palette knife, because what will happen is if you use your palette knife, um, you will see the white underneath, and you want to be able to see the, the blue underneath. You don't want to have white scrape marks. So instead, grab your wash brush and move that paint around. Now I'm using the darkest color, which is the ultramarine blue with a little bit of white. This will go on the top part of the canvas. Okay, and then I'm going to go to my next color, which is the cobalt blue with a little bit of white. And it should be just a little bit lighter, so if you need to adjust the color, then go ahead and do so. So right now I'm adding in the cerulean blue with my white, and it's creating a different type of blue, and you also want that to be lighter, so I'll add a little white to that. I'm going to take some time to blend here. I don't have any water on my brush, so that's important to know because I'm just softly touching the canvas to get a nice blend. So the top two-thirds of my painting is going to be the sky, so you can leave that bottom third blank for now. Now let that dry. You can take your blow dryer to speed up the process. Now I'm going to grab my palette knife and I'm going to add those paint colors in the same order. And you'll notice that it's a little bit darker. This is because I have a lot more paint on my palette knife and we're not getting to see the light of the white canvas or panel behind it. Okay. So this is where you can add in a lot of texture. Just kind of go with the flow, whatever texture you create, just go with it. Now I'm adding in the next color of the sky, which was the cobalt blue with white. And I'm going to add touches of that color up there in the top part of the sky too. So a little bit of the dark blue will be intermingled with that medium blue. And um, also once I get to the light blue, it's going to intermingle with the blue next to it. So it's going to be kind of softened that way. So yeah, don't worry about cleaning off your palette knife and don't worry about those colors mixing in with each other. This is going to end up being a very textured painting. So you can um, either smooth it out where you like, but for me, I'm going to make sure that I have covered every area with palette knife marks. Down on the bottom, I just added white to my palette knife and I'm moving that white up. This is to make sure that that bottom part is the lightest blue in the sky. Clean off your palette knife because now we're going to add in the clouds. For the clouds, I'm going to have a gray color. You can use your black and white to make a gray. I'm grabbing yellow, which is cadmium yellow, and I'm going to mix that with a lot of white to just get a nice warm white color. And that's all you need. Now, I don't want my gray to be too dark because this isn't a stormy scene. This is just a nice, pretty day. So I'm adding a lot of white to make it a light gray. And I'm going to add a little bit of my blue from my sky, just a tad, just to create some more harmony into this color so it kind of goes with the rest of the colors in the painting. Now, this is where you get to be really creative and just take your palette knife and your color and you add it onto your canvas where you want your clouds to be. Now this will be the first layer of the clouds, so the colors will really stand out because we started with the gray. And then we'll go to the yellow and then to the white. So go ahead and place your clouds wherever you want and have fun being creative. If you wanna get the reference photo for my painting, you can click on that top right and become a Create Full Art member, and that'll help you kind of have a guideline of where I put mine, maybe to give you some inspiration, but I want you to feel free to do what you wish with your clouds. I did end up making a little bit darker of a gray color. I just wanted to see how it would look 
and I liked it a little bit better. I feel like it's not so light. So I'm going to add that in to some of the clouds. So notice how with your palette knife, when you put down the color, it shouldn't be mixing with that underneath color. The more you would move around or add the color, the more it would mix, okay? So it should sit on top. And I'm adding some of that gray down below, and this is going to create some harmony. So this will be the start of the landscape down below. Now I'm kind of just making this out of my mind, just kind of coming up with the idea myself. So I decided to take some of that blue in the sky and add it down below. I'm kind of thinking that I want maybe a lake down there or a river or a pond or flooded waters. I don't know, but it'll end up being something down there. So I'm going to add in all three colors of the blue in certain areas. Okay, so you can go ahead and do that with your palette knife. And it doesn't matter if your gray and your blue mix a little bit. And it doesn't matter if your marks are different than mine. So just have fun with it. So now back to the clouds. Now I'm going to add a lot of white to my cadmium yellow and I'm going to get kind of like a buttery color, okay? So keep mixing until you get a really light yellow. Go ahead and dip into that color with your palette knife and add it into just some areas of your clouds. I would like you to notice how it really stands out against that gray. And so it brightens up the painting and makes it look like the sun is touching those clouds in the areas that you put it. You can go ahead and place it anywhere you want. Just make sure that you don't cover all of your gray area. And um, also some of the gray area looks a little bit better having that at the bottom of the clouds versus um, at the top of the clouds. All just depends on your clouds, of course, but um, Kind of look at clouds and and see where the colors lay and it'll help you or you can look at my reference photo now clouds that are in the background so they're the clouds that are further away you usually see less contrast with them so i'm going to add a, a little more of that yellow and um, when i come in with the white i'm going to try to soften those clouds that are way 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 there in the back which will be closer to the horizon line now I'm adding white and it just has a tiny bit of the gray color in it, just a tiny, tiny bit. And um, I'm focusing on scraping against the texture of the sky background on the areas around the base of the cloud um, so I can get some like little pieces of cloud that are floating away from the main, cl the main cloud. And then I'm taking some of the color and I'm mixing it in the big part of the cloud. These clouds are going to be mostly this really light white color because it's not a stormy day. It's just a nice, bright, sunny spring day. So that's what I'm going for with this look. And there's just, it's a really cloudy day too. <laughs> so I'm adding as many clouds as I want, but you can make yours totally different and add less clouds if you want to. Now I'm just going to add some of those colors that I used in the clouds to my foreground, which is going to be maybe a lake or a river or something we'll find out in the future. So I just want to create some harmony by having the colors pulled all throughout the painting. Okay, so now I'm going to focus on the foreground, which is going to be some trees and I think some grasses and stuff. So I'm going to be using my emerald green, my hooker's green, some black. So I'm going to use my black and my emerald green. I'm going to mix them together to make a color. I'm going to use my hooker's green and then I'll add a little bit of the brighter green for the lighter color and maybe add a little yellow into that um, emerald green for the lighter green. But for now in the background I want to add in that strong contrast that's going to be where the trees are shaded. So I'm taking my palette knife and getting a dark green color, and then I'm going to put it down right below the cloud. Now, notice how my cloud is not dry, and so it's mixing with the cloud color. And that's just gonna give kind of like a little bit of a hazy look. I can always go over it if I want, 
I'm going to have a little bit of higher trees over there on the left, and then I'm going to have them um, taper off in that left corner right there where they meet the land. And then I'm going to make them kind of go up again and then come down again, okay? So I'm shaping them, and you can have yours a different shape, but I just want it to look like that. So part of the painting, you noticed there is no mixing with the gray, and so it's made that really dark color. And then I've added some of my more olive green, which is the hooker's green, okay? Then I added a little bit of the green down below where the water is just to kind of see if I wanted some trees in the foreground there. And now I'm going to wait for it to dry. So now that it's dry or drier, it's going to sit on top a little bit better of the paint and not mix in with the gray of the clouds. So I'm going to add in some um, colors to go over some of those trees that I feel like they mixed a little bit too much with the gray and um, get in some of that more of a green color. Now, I want some of the light to be touching, that sunlight, to be touching those trees, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna add in some of the light color. I made this color by adding in a little bit of yellow and just a tad bit of white with my hooker's green. So the more yellow that you add to it, the more it's going to be a lot brighter or saturated of a color. Be sure not to cover all of the dark shadowed area of your trees. Just focus on the tops of the trees because the light will hit those and then um, the like a couple places where maybe the side of the tree shows some light. So I'm gonna pick right over there on the right. Uh, I'm gonna add some light in there just to create some more depth and have a lighter tree but I wanna make sure that I don't cover all of the dark shadowed area. I'm gonna take some of my black and the darkest green mixed with my black and I'm gonna pull down on those trees just to bring them down a little bit lower. So I'm just doing that with my palette knife and um, if I want to, I can always go over that area with whatever I put in the foreground too if I wanna raise the, the trees. So. I just want to make sure that I have enough of the dark to create a shadow line of those trees and then I want to um, add in some of my emerald green. So I'm taking some of my emerald green there, mixing it with my other colors to get kind of this brighter green color. Um, I'm going with the brighter green because this is a spring painting. So I added in a little bit of yellow and a little bit of white just to lighten it down. Notice the more yellow I put into the color, the brighter the color is going to be. I'm going to add that brighter color right there against the black because I want it to have kind of a higher contrast to bring your eye right there and then into the clouds. So I'm putting down those colors right there, right below. I can always fix any lines and stuff later. Okay, and then I'm just pulling down with my palette knife to cover some of that area. Then I can add in whatever texture I want over the top. So go ahead and add in your green color. And I'm gonna go over the blue just a little bit because these are grasses and the grasses will cover some of the blue area. And just peek through the grass area. So at this point, um, Notice how my composition's coming together. So where I added that green, I'm adding in some shadow right there where the grass is um, against the blue. And notice how I have two lines kind of going up from the bottom right, and then they move into the trees back there in the middle ground, and then um, I'm going to probably add something to those trees so that it comes up to the sky. So maybe lighten an area or something. So it's important to add layers of color, otherwise your painting is going to look very flat. So I'm adding in some yellow and I'm going to kind of mix it with the green because the green's not dry, um, but leave some of it unmixed. And this is just going to kind of look like maybe flowers or 
Just the tips of the old grass that was in there before the green grass started to shoot up. It can be whatever your brain decides it to be. Okay, so now I need to add in some of the shadow color into my grass because it doesn't. There's not enough um, interest, and you know you're gonna have some shadows in that grass that are going to um, make the lighter grass pop out. Okay, so I'm just adding that in. I want to focus on um, a few areas that have just a massive amount of the same color. Adding some shadow there will make it look less flat. Also, up against where the water is meeting the grass needs to have some more shadow area. So focusing on those areas, just bringing in the shadow, and that'll create the depth in your artwork and it'll also make it so that your brain will um, make sense of it. So this is a time to look back on your painting and decide if there's any changes you need to make. So I feel like I need to lower the shadow area. I also want to put in some flowers. So you can choose any color of flowers that you want to put in. And you just add a tiny bit to your palette knife and just kind of dot your palette knife onto your canvas so that you're not smearing any of the under layer color with the red. You want to sit on top. So I have two different kinds of reds here. One looks very orange, but it's actually a red. Um, and then a deeper red. And this is going to give more depth to my flowers. So if you want to get like maybe a dark purple and a lighter purple or a magenta and a pink or, you know, whatever colors you want to add for your flowers. If you want to do red too, that's fine. Just have fun with it and I don't want to add too much of it that it's really distracting, so I'm just going to focus on just a few areas close to the water. So when I look back on it again, I notice that I need to have some more shadows or more contrast, I would say, up against the water. So I'm going to add that in and just pull a little bit of that dark color across the water. and. I like the look, so I'm gonna keep working on that. Now I've taken some white and put it on my finger and I'm gonna soften the clouds because I feel like they're kind of harsh, strong against that blue background. So I'm just gonna kind of go in and smear just a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit. And the texture of the background, that blue background will pull some of that color off of my finger. And I'm just softening the clouds just a little bit by smearing some colors together up there. And that'll get that pastel look that um, Jacob has in his artwork because he actually uses um, pastels. Like he, past he paints with pastels. And so um, I like the look of the pastels. And so I'm getting that softer look by smearing with my finger. So if you find that your painting is a little too hard, you know, the edges are a little too hard for you, for your liking, then you can do that. If you like it the way it is, then just skip that part. This is all about personal preferences in this step, so you can do whatever you wish in this step. I just am going to show you why I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm going to add a little bit of the white of the clouds into the blue water just to create some more depth because those clouds are going to reflect off of the water. So I'm just going to smear in a little bit of the white and let it grab from my finger wherever it does. And then I'm pulling some of that black down to where it'll shadow and bounce off of the water right below it. So I'm just going to add that in. And because I love spring and I want this to be a very springy painting, I'm adding in some birds in the background and I just put black on my brush and I'm making a V shape. So you could use your palette knife too, it just gives you more control to have the brush. I'm going to add in three birds because I like things to be in threes or odd numbers, following the rule of odds. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you learned a lot about painting with a palette knife. I love teaching you different painting techniques that you can try with your acrylics. 
So go ahead and sign your work when you are done and give yourself a pat on the back because you just accomplished something really awesome today. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe. Hit that bell next to the subscribe button and click all so you're notified when I make new videos. Also, if you haven't already, sign up for my art lessons. They're gonna teach you all the different things about acrylic paints so that you can become an expert like in color theory and in composition and all the stuff you need to know. And then you can watch more videos and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.